the Premier League. The ultimate goal for all teams in England to strive for. The grandest stage for worldwide talent to showcase their skills. Today, a small team in the south of Sheffield makes their first ever appearance. When just 12 short years ago, they were still kicking a ball about in level eight. Sheffield FC have hit the mountaintop, but only time will tell if they're able to stay on top of that mountain. What's going on guys, it's Gendo here. Hope you're having a good day and welcome back to another edition of the World's First Course. If you're still enjoying the series, please go and hit that like button. Now today, it's our very first foray in the Premier League and we're gonna be taking on Brentford. I know Brentford in the Premier League. They're our first opponents. But before we get to that, of course, we have a bunch of stuff to talk about. We need to go over all the transfers, both in and out. I had to revamp and reload half of this squad to make it uh, at least semi-viable in the Premier League and because of that we put ourselves in a little bit of debt we're gonna go over the bank balance we're gonna go over how much money we actually have left to spend and it's not all that much but we'll worry about that at a later time and also go over what the expectations are of this upcoming season both in the cups and in the league so without further ado let's go through the transfers so as you can see there's a lot of players on the way out and a lot of them being released on a free because most of them were just ending contracts and because they were either too old or just didn't have the ability to play in the Premier League I just decided to ship them off just get rid of them not have to worry about their contracts anymore or have them be a liability for the club so as you can see I'm just gonna let you read it off by yourself because it's quite a lot of names the only player that we had sold off for any sort of money was Walid Diab we sold him to Millwall for only 36 and a half thousand pounds we picked him up in the January window this past season in my thoughts of trying to turn him into a proper good striker 20 years old a lot of time to develop but you know moving up to the Premier League now there just wasn't going to be that vetting process to get him in as a starting striker so we just had to ship him off now I will say this there is one name on this list that you're looking at like who the hell is that and why does he have that long ass name? And it very much is that person that's sitting down there at the bottom, Suleiman Eteme Mbatama. Now I know I really said that name really, really wrong, but yeah, we brought him in on a free. So you're probably wondering how the hell did you find someone like this, this 22 year old Cameroonian uh, just looking like God and I was able to pick him up on a free. Well, he was sitting in Cameroon and I found him during the CAF under 23's Cup of Nations. To which you're probably going is like, Brian, why were you scouting that competition in the first place? Well, it's not really scouting, but I'll show you exactly what I did. What it is is called screen flow and I'm not the best person to talk to you about this. Take a look at Fox in the Box. He did a video on it last year and I basically carried it over to this season. But what it is is you could set various competitions to watch it's not a subscription you're basically watching the competition and you can you know, have it set to looking at the profile you can have it set to uh your your intervals of every week every month etc while the competition is going on that's key because the competition was going on i was able to take a look and see how players were performing you take a look at goals assists overall average rating clean sheets and whatnot so that's how i was able to pick up suleiman because he was the best striker in that under 23 pod he scored six goals in three games so i'm like yeah let's take a punt on this guy he doesn't seem all that bad and this was without me getting a full scout report on him like i said took a punt on him offered him 650,000 quid and he accepted and i am very ecstatic that he's able to come into the club and help us out however he failed his work permit a uh, disappointment of course but i feel like i can loan him out right now and there are actually six matches coming up for Cameroon. I'm sure with the skills that he has, he's going to get called up for all six, maybe even play in all six. So once that is set is done, once the mandatory 90 days are done that I can't apply for a work permit again, I'll try and reapply. Hopefully they will accept him and then I can finally use him as a striker in my system because really 
he looks Premier League fit. Now, after signing that little gem, I brought back three players for a grand total of 5.2 million pounds, and they are Neil Cooper, Stefan Edwards, and Ander Martinez. Now, for all three of these players, they were the best option at their position. Um, Neil Cooper has far exceeded what I expected of him and has far exceeded Jean Amena. So Jean Amena is now playing back up to Neil Cooper in the terms of Stefan Edwards. Great striker for us last season. If he was banging him in the championship, I expect him to go at least one every three in the Premier League. Cross fingers, hopefully he can stay uh, fairly free of injury. And then Ander Martinez, easily the best center back I had last season in the championship. Hopefully I can translate once again into the Premier League. I'm really banking on these guys. Coming in from Reading for a fee of 1.5 million pounds, it's Lewis Dunn as a midfielder, the 24 year old. He is very, very tall, six foot four. Uh, he is very technically sound. He's got great vision on him. He is going to be that rock in the middle, that engine that drives us in our attack going from back to front and hopefully he can score some goals. Coming in from Peterborough, a new right back, a Dane by the name of Jesper Anderson. We paid half a million pounds to bring him in. He is very, very small at five foot four, but as a winger, I'm not really expecting him to be that tall. Now, if I had a five four center back, that's a completely different story. But as a winger or a wing back, all I'm looking for him is to have some decent defensive stats, win the ball back, and take it up the wing to start a counterattack, and he can do just that. He can play in the left and the center. It's Cameron Borthwick Jack. And he is coming in from Wickham also for 500,000 pounds. The 5 foot 11 youngster, I say youngster, he's 30 years old, but he is still very capable of getting it done out on the pitch. Once again, this was me just trying to find anybody and everybody that has good to decent Premier League potential or Premier League ability and fill a gap. And I think Cameron has that uh, ability to fill that gap. Next two defenders I picked up on freeze, mostly for that stopgap ability in the Premier League, but also for experience as well. Daniel Henry, as you can see, he's 34 years old, but he has so much international experience. He was capped by Canada 150 times, but even that aside, he still has the ability of a defender. He may start to slow down this season, but I have him on for the next two. Actually, I only have him on for one season. So that this is going to be a trial period just to see if I can get enough out of him to keep us afloat in the Premier League. And then alongside him, left back Stephen Hendry, who more than likely is going to be my backup left back at this point in time, but he does still have the ability to go and be a proper wing back. The 32-year-old, look at that marking, look at that tackling. He's got some decent positioning about him as well. Physically average. Crossing ability for a wing back is great as well. Or great, I say decent. But like I said, decent player for trying to do a decent job here in the Premier League. Move over Charlie Lakin and Jack Steele because Ashley Bailey is coming in to take your job. The guy, the 26-year-old, is coming in from Newcastle for a fee of 1.2 million pounds. And, well, the reason why I bought him is I like his pace and I like his crossing because fast wingers are the way to go. It doesn't matter what league you're in. If you got fast wingers, you're more than likely going to have a good time. 16 pace, 15 acceleration, 16 crossing. I mean, you can't go wrong with this kid. He's definitely going to be my new starting left mid. And then more than likely backing up Jesper is going to be this kid, Jordan Gabriel, coming in from Huddersfield for a fee of 700,000 pounds. 28 year old, looks pretty solid. I may have overpaid for him, at least contract wise, but still in this league, you gotta pay if you wanna play. Decent defensive stats, good pace, good physical stats on him as well. It was really hard to separate Jordan and Jesper, but I feel like if I have two equal players and one of them goes down, it's not like I have such a big drop off for my backup. It's great to have two equal players that can fill a role and do well, supposedly, when called upon. And then the last two players are going to be loanees, and one of them is going to be a returner, Jakob Moen, coming back in from Watford for one more season. He did so well for us last season in the championship, and he can only go up from here. I feel like he is going to be a star, a primetime midfielder for the Premier League in his coming years. He just looks like he's going to develop into a great player. And the last one is Marco Voitalainen. I believe I said the name correctly. The Finn is coming in from Sweden. Swansea for on a season-long loan. He's also going to be playing out on the left mid, so he's backing up Ashley Bailey. 
he looks okay. I mean, for a 22-year-old, he looks okay. Speed-wise, decent. Crossing-wise, decent. He's just he's just an overall average player, and sometimes average can do it. He's got nowhere to go but up, and I feel like he can do a decent job backing up Ashley Bailey. As it stands right now, this is what the board expect us to do this season. They say they want us to avoid relegation, so right there and then, they're throwing down the gauntlet, finish 17th, which means, you know what the old saying goes in the Premier League, get 40 points, you're more than likely staying up one more season in the Premier League. So that's our goal, 17th place and 40 points. Just take a look at some of, the, some of these other teams that are sitting up here. Uh, Brighton Hove Albion, QPR, Nottingham Forest, Brentford, like what we're playing today, Burnley, Aston Villa, some of these teams are still up. Derby County are in this, uh, in this Premier League season. So I feel like there can be some wins to be had here, but... This is 12 years into the future. We don't know how strong these clubs are to have stayed in the Premier League. Only time will tell over this next season if we have done enough to, to solidify ourselves as mainstays in the Premier League. As far as the cup competitions go, third round of the FA Cup, second round of the Capital One Cup, I'm not hedging all my bets on a going on a cup run. It would be nice if we got extra money in that, but I'm not really expecting much of anything when it comes to those two competitions. So with all those players I brought in, you're asking yourself, okay, Brian, how much are you paying in wages now? Well, as you can see here, it is 13, just under 13 and a half million pounds worth in terms of wages. We also have a wage budget right now of 14.8, but that can be slid all the way over to 16 million. So we're definitely under budget, but I feel if we go over even further, this is going to be a problem. We'd be going into debt. We'll be making less money than we're spending out. And with how much debt we're in right now, we can't go any further in the red. We really can't. Because this is what our sheet looks like. We're 2.3 million in the red. And yes, that is because of all the spending and whatnot for all these player wages. It is justified. Hopefully we can make some of this back during this upcoming season. Hell, even if we stay up in the Premier League for one more season. But as you can see, we did make a profit. That is because of the Premier League money, the, the TV revenue money that was given to us at the start of August. We are given 90 million pounds, 90 million pounds over the course of 12 month installments for this next season, which comes out to roughly 7.5, 7.6 million pounds per month, which means that that's, you know, cutting away how many expenses that we're sending out already due to player wages and whatnot, but we really need to now not pay any more players. We need to go with what we have right now and at the same time hope that the uh, the gate receipts and whatnot for all the cup competitions and the Premier League matches will counteract uh, us losing money at a rapid rate. Speaking of gate receipts, we are no longer at the coach and horses ground, at least for this season. That's being upgraded to a 6,000 seater stadium. I know it's still not ready for the Premier League. It, I mean, it's less than it's less than the Vitality Stadium at Bournemouth right now. It's that it's that in need of repair. So where we're we going to be playing at? We're playing at the Keepmoat Stadium in Doncaster. That's where the Donny Rovers play. It, which even then, that's a very small capacity stadium at 15,000. Still less than the Vitality. But hey, it's better than what we're using right now. So hopefully we can pack that stadium every single week that we are playing there, of course, and use that gate receipt from 15,000 people and help get us out of debt. That's all I'm looking for right now. I know we can pack that stadium versus like Chelsea, Arsenal, etc. Hopefully we can pack it every single week. Who knows? Also, da 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 da, I am legend. And that's because during the season turnover in the, uh, in the middle of June, at the end of June, that's when all the stats got tabulated, everything else got changed over, and that's when I moved over from icon to legend. So I'm officially legend here at Sheffield, getting us up into the Premier League. Uh, I got a lot to live up to now. And, uh, yeah, the only way we can live up to that is putting together some decent performances in the Prem. So, without any further ado, let's now take a look at who we're going to be playing versus Brentford. We're going to be starting this season off away from home, and like I said, we're going with the 4-4-2, and this is the lineup we're going to have. Denicio Silva sitting there in net. Anderson, Martinez, Henry, and Hendry 
along the back line, three out of the four new people coming in. The middle will consist of Cooper, O'Donnell, Moen, and Bailey, and then sitting up front, Stefan Edwards and Liam O'Neill. The strike partnership from all of last season, well, most of last season, is making its return, and hopefully it can bang in the goals in the Premier League like they did in the Championship. Of course, it all remains to be seen. It is one match, but we only have one chance to make a good first impression. So hopefully we can go out there and do that today versus Brentford. Let's kick off, see what happens. Cross fingers, it's on the right foot. Ah, you smell that, players? That's the smell of Premier League football. And we're gonna be in the blues today. Blue magic, hopefully. Brentford getting the ball out to the wing. I feel like this is going to be a Brentford goal. Gets into the box, it's not cleared away. It's not dealt with. Malin to slight. Gonzalvo out to the wing. Zabaleta. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, that was such a short angle shot. We had defenders there. The goalkeeper was there too. How did it slip through? Even with them switching the pitch, I felt like we had enough in place that we could have dealt with this and, well, at the very least, could have stopped the shot. But Dionisio Silva not doing all that well with that. Brentford coming inside with the box. Daniel Henry with the foul. <clears throat> I mean, it looked to be a good cross to begin with. I thought for sure they would have gotten that goal from that cross. But instead, we foul a man and we give away a penalty. And just eight minutes on, it could be 2-0 to Brentford here. Mollin stepping up, taking the shots. Keeper goes the wrong way. It's 2-0 to Brentford. Come on, boys. Wake up. Wake up. You're in the Premier League. It doesn't look like they have showed up for this match at all. They're probably still asleep on the team bus. Liam O'Neill, oh, look at that, off of a rebound. A parry by the goalkeeper, sending it directly back to O'Neill. It's the first goal of the season. It's the first Premier League goal for Sheffield, and it comes at the feet of Liam O'Neill, a, a man who scored 30 goals last season, so fully deserved. We're back into this match. Three goals in 10 minutes already? And we could even have a fourth? Moen. Out to Bailey, if the blue shirts, if the blue angels can bomb forward, why are you making that bad of a pass? Oh man, and now the defense is scrambling to get back there. Wow. We spent a minute on the other end trying to play it through past Brentford, and all they do is take it down the pitch in 15 seconds and score a third. <laughs> Wonderful, boys. Wake up. I guess that's what I get for having 30 plus year old defenders. This day cannot get any longer. Jesper Anderson has now picked up an injury, so I'm going to have to sub him out for Curtis Nelson because the other right back that I brought in, he was also injured. How much worse can our Premier League debut go? I mean, we can always concede a fourth. That could always be worse. I mean, I know it's the first game of the season, but it doesn't look like anybody is trying. And once again, I got a point to my back line. Either they're injured or they're making shitty decisions or they're getting yellow cards. There just isn't anything that we can do at this point in time. And I say that Donnie O'Henry scores his first goal for the club and it's the second for the day. Six goals in the first half. Can you believe it? I mean, it's nice that we scored two goals in the first half. It's just disgusting that we gave up four in that same time frame. So Brentford are just running circles around us. And like I said, this is I this is something I just need to chalk up to my 30 plus year old defenders that have no pace or at least not good enough pace for this uh, Premier League. I mean, I, I got people sitting with 12, 13 pace. That's average. Free kick to Brentford from the top of the box. It hits the crossbar. Oh, man, oh, man. I mean, they're just banging. They're just banging for this fifth goal. It may not happen. It may not come true, but they're they're trying. And there it is. <laughs> oh, I thought for sure they were going to get on one free kick, but then they get it on the other. So there's Brentford's fifth. So, yeah, a bad day at the office, but at least we put up a little bit of fight on our Premier League debut, but we uh, can always do better. We can always do better. And Brentford, I don't know how Brentford did last season, but I thought they would be one of the teams that we could have had a little bit, a little bit more luck against. But as it is on the day, that's just not to be. So as it stands after one match, 16th in the table. One match down, 
37 to go. So no real need to take too much stock in that. But let's take a look at the schedule and see exactly when we'll be coming back. So this is what the schedule looks like going forward. And the very next two teams that you see on that list, Burnley and Brighton. Now, going by those names alone, you would think that, hey, these are two teams that we should probably get something against. Now, <laughs> after the result versus Brentford, I don't even know if that's even possible. We could try, we could certainly try, but I I don't put 100% stock that we're actually gonna get a result against these two teams now. Followed that is the Capital One Cup second round match, then Derby, Nottingham Forest, and Manchester City, uh, which after that point in time, I feel would be a great time to come back and live com West Bromwich Albion and Fulham. Now, we're probably, we're definitely gonna be taking our lumps this season, that's a fact. The whole goal is to try and stay in 17th place, and in order to do that, we need to get results, and we need to get results early. So, against West Brom and Fulham, I feel that that's another place where we could probably get some results. All remains to be seen, though. So, hopefully, you'll tune back in at that point in time. But for this episode, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, go and smash that like button. Let me know if you're still interested in the series. And, of course, if you're new to the series and the channel in general, go and hit that subscribe button. Any comments, suggestions, questions, anything else at all, please leave in the comment box below. But, as always, guys, this is Gendo, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and peace out.